You are about to hear a song sung by Elvis Presley. It was written by one of these three people. You can't say no In Acapulco With every beat your heart will answer yes What is your name, please? My name is Lee Morris. My name is Lee Morris. My name is Lee Morris. Only one of these people is the real Lee Morris. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Jean Rayburn, and Betty Furness. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Welcome once again to, to Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Dristan decongestant tablets for relief of colds, misery, sinus congestion, Dristan. Good evening, pal. Good Hi, evening, Bud. Hi, Bud. And a warm welcome back to you, Betty Furness. Thank you, Bud. It's great fun to be here. Kitty Carlisle is think... taking a week's vacation. <laughs> We're mighty glad we could find you, believe so me. So am I. Gene? Nice Peggy. to have you back, bud. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom, we're all set, I'm sure, so let's open up that first uh, envelope, if you will, and follow along with me on this first story. I, Lee Morris, am a junior high school teacher. I am also a popular songwriter, and I have written over 1,000 songs. They have been recorded by such top artists as Elvis Presley, Tony Bennett, the McGuire Sisters, Lawrence Welk, Bobby Vinton, and Frank Sinatra. Last year, my biggest hit sold over two million records and became the number one song in America. It's called Blue Velvet, signed Lee Morris. panel, these three persons all claim to be Lee Morris, junior high school teacher and songwriter. May we start the questioning with Gene Rayburn. Gene? Thank you, Bud. Uh, number two, would you tell me what city you lived in when you wrote this song for Mr. Presley? Costa Mesa, California. And number three, uh, who wrote this song uh, that Tony Bennett made such a big hit of, San Francisco? San Francisco. I don't know. And uh, number one, you know what a lead sheet is? It's the music that you write down, uh, the notes of the song. Uh, number one, again, uh, in the signature of a song, if there's one sharp in the signature, what key is that in? I don't know. Number... Uh, Betty Furnett. Number two, what is the name of El Elvis Presley's manager? Uh, Colonel Parker. Number three, a uh, great many uh, records are made not in New York or California, but in another city. What is that city? Nashville, Tennessee. Number one, what uh, label does Frank Sinatra record for? Uh, cat, cat, no, reprise. reprise. Number two, what label does Elvis Presley record RCA. for? RCA. Number three, do you write songs? Uh, do, do you write the lyrics or the music? Words, mostly. And who writes and, the music? Well, I have different ones, but the music too. Who wrote the music to this one? Uh, Tom Poston. I don't mean he wrote the music. No, goodness, no. Tom. I couldn't even read it. Uh, number three, where were you living when you uh, wrote the song? I was down in my hometown, Wilmington, North Carolina. Oh, that's where you're from? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, num number three, what was, that, uh, what was this done for, this song? Was it done, uh, were you under contract or did you write it? Uh, no, 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 I'm not under contract. I was freelancing. You were freelancing at the time. Thank you. Number two, why do singers sing in different keys? I mean, why can't all songs be written in the same? What difference does it make? I suppose for the simple reason they don't have all have the same voice. Uh, what does <laughs> what does the difference in a key make? For instance, couldn't he sing this in more than one key? I don't know what Elvis Presley what keys he can sing in all of them. I know he, I know he sings this one beautifully. Sure does. No, uh, Peggy. Thank you. Uh, number three, who wrote the music to Blue Velvet? Blue Velvet, uh, Les Morgan. Uh, number two, what? Firm, what label does Jane Morgan record for? I don't know. Uh, well, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> number one, uh, who was the champagne lady on Lawrence Welk? What was her name? Uh, Peggy Fritz Alfred. And uh, number three, do you agree with that? Right. Uh, number two, who owns Frank Music? Frank Music? Yes. 
You mean the name of the person? Yes. I don't know. Maybe Mr. Frank. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all the time we have. It's time for you now to mark your ballot. So the one you think is the real one, of course. Mark them at once without change. No consultation, of course. As you vote now, please, for number one, number two, or number three. Our team of challengers will be awarded, of course, the usual $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked? Yeah. All right. Tom, for whom did you vote? I, I don't know. I vote. He looks like a school teacher to me. We didn't ask him any questions. Who? Number one. Oh. Uh, number one. <laughs> Who else looks like a school teacher? <laughs> Peggy. I voted for number one. And the reason was, I heard Blue Velvet on the radio today on William B. Williams, and they mentioned who wrote it, and the name wasn't Les Morgan, so I didn't vote for three. Oh, he's pointing at me. <laughs> <laughs> Putting anyway, a hex on you. I voted for one. I'm sorry, three. <laughs> Gene Rayburn. You know, for the first time, I found a good reason not to vote for any of them. <laughs> I was really in a pickle. I voted for number two. Number one didn't uh, seem to know about the musical signatures, and uh, number three misled me in some other way, so I don't know. I just, on a hunch, went for number two. Betty? Well, I went for number one also. Uh, I think it's pretty good that he knew about Frank Sinatra's label, Reprise. It's a remote one. Number three didn't seem to remember who'd written the music to his own song, so I, I, I didn't think that was right. And I think that if you've written a thousand songs, you would know that Frank Music's name was Frank Lesser. So I'm with number one. All right, there we have it. It's almost unanimous. I'm the only right one. Three for number one and one for number two. Let's find out who is the right one and who the wrong one. As we learn now, which one of these... A person actually is the one who wrote a uh, thousand songs and is also a junior high school teacher as well as being a songwriter. So will the real Lee Morris please stand up? Thank you, sir, very much. Who wrote the music? They couldn't it? remember. I coached them. Bernie Wade, of course. That's it, Bernie Wade. It was on the radio. <laughs> they couldn't yes, remember, he. but they tried. How can you write a thousand songs and not know about musical signatures? I don't read or write music. I know music, but I, I don't know anything about the technical things. All by ear. Oh, oh. Very much. That's he missed. I'm so yeah, happy right. I misled you. You didn't any music anyway. You did the lyrics. Right? He just, no, I do both. He just I makes money. Get in the ranger. <laughs> number two, cool. what is your real name and what do you really do? I'm a school teacher. My name is Lee Morris. No, number two. <laughs> <laughs> now you got me confused. We've got you, all right. Number two. My name is Mildred Murray and I represent a French commercial film company. Thank you. Number three, what is your real name, sir, and what do you do? I'm O.D. Curtis, and I'm general passenger sales agent for the Atlantic Coast Line Railroad. And I'm not a musician. <laughs> well, in checking the score, we find that there was only one incorrect vote, but that's worth $250. And that comes to you from Dristan, and, of course, on your way out, you'll be handed a gift package of all the fine products. And the makers of Dristan, we thank you very much for being with us, and hope you had as good a time as you gave to us. Goodbye, and God bless you. <laughs> Now let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Grace E. Shu. My name is Grace E. Shu. My name is Grace E. Shu. Follow along, if you will, panel, with your copies of this story. I, Grace E. Shu, am currently a member of Nationalist China's House of Representatives. In 1941, when the invading Japanese were overrunning China, I was the mayor of Dipu in Qichang province. I found I had to get 71 orphaned children out of the war zone to safety. There were no vehicles available, so the children and I started walking. Always just a few miles ahead of the advancing Japanese, we sometimes went without food for days. When our shoes gave out, we tied leaves about our feet and kept walking. By the time we reached safety, the children and I had covered a distance of over 3,000 miles. Walking only at night, the trip had taken us just over five months. Signed, Grace Yi Shu. <laughs> The 
Finally, these three ladies all claim to be Grace E. Shu, heroine of what I think you'll agree is a very heroic story, leading 71 children to safety over all that distance. Let's start the cross-examination with Betty Furness. Betty? Thank you, bud. Miss Grace E. Shu, whichever is you, I'm enchanted to meet you. <laughs> Number one, uh, tell me about the House of Representatives. Are there other women serving on it? Yes. Number two, how many women are in the House of Representatives? More than 200. More than 200. Number three, how big is your House of Representatives? Close to uh, 1,500. Mm -hmm. Number two, how, uh, how old were the children in this march? Uh, the age is uh, from 7 to 17. And were there any other adults with you, or did you do this alone? I did it alone. I don't know where to go. Tom Boston. Gee, that's marvelous. Uh, uh, number three, there was a man from, uh, from uh, Red China recently who was uh, uh, connected with the Japanese embassy, and he defected to, to your country. What subsequently happened to him? Do you remember? I think they were planning to send him back. To? To Red China. To Red China. Thank you. Number two, there is a, a lady who was once married to the governor or the mayor of some town. She runs the Chinese gardens, I think, in White Plains. Do you happen to know that lady? Yes. What is her name? Mrs. Lee. That's right. I mean, <laughs> that, that, I couldn't remember her name, but I met her. <laughs> Peggy Cat. Uh, thank you. Number three, is Nationalist China going to have a place at the World's Fair? Yes. Uh, number two, what is the capital of, uh, Nash of um, your island? Taipei. Taipei. Thank you. Number one, another lady led a lot of children in China. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's a, they wrote a movie called The End of the Sixth Happiness about her. What was her name, please? I don't remember her name. Um, number three, what city in China is called the Forbidden City? Peking. Number two, what city is called the Walled City? The Pick your pardon? The wall? It's city? a wall. Walled. Walled. There's a wall city. all around it. Wall all around oh, it. Oh, that's a forbidden city. Uh, number one. Gene Rayburn. Number one, uh, in your uh, House of Representatives, what is the population ratio? That is, how many people elect one representative? Each city, one, man, one woman, two men. The largest city. The small city, only one. And that gives you your 1,500 people? We actually is uh, more than 3,000 uh, representatives. More than 3,000? I that see. That was in mainland. Well, I could uh, tell which of these three ladies is the heroine if I could see their feet. Would that be permissible? No, I'm afraid not. <laughs> I mean, they must have bunions that are still growing. <laughs> Well, that's all the time we have, but you must have gleaned enough information by now to go to work on your ballot, so will you kindly do so? Mark them at once. No consultation, of course, no change once you've marked, and vote for number one, number two, or number three. Are all ballots marked? No, I haven't. I can't. Uh, will you mark Gee, it, please? They're very good. Swiftly, mm -hmm. because time is a-wasting. I'd like that hat for Easter number two. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, I voted for number one because she corrected the other lady about the number. Uh, actually, I, I thought they were all marvelous, and whoever really did it was a very brave lady. Peggy. I voted for number one because I feel as long as she lives in Nationalist China, she would know that lady in White Plains. And number three, even though you did know about the World's Fair, she knew so much about that House of Representatives, so I voted for number one. Gene Rayburn. I feel I asked the best question in this round. Oh, you do. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> I voted for number one on the basis of my question. <laughs> Betty. Well, I voted for number two, and I'm not terribly sure why. I think she knows about the House of Representatives. We have to take a choice about which one of them is right. And number three, I just, I, I don't, I, I don't think that she looks as though she's been through that adventure. That's all. So I'm with number two. All right. And again, we have a similar repeat of, of marking here. There were three for number one, one for number two. Let's go to our charm circle and see how we square off there. As we learn now, which one of these ladies actually is the heroine of a very thrilling experience having led 71 children, orphan children, to safety? Will the real Grace Yi Shu please stand up?
thank you very much. It, uh, not only are we terribly proud and somewhat humble to meet you and, and uh, congratulate you, and uh, I don't know really quite how to say it, but I want to tell you what this young lady has done since. Show you that this was not just a happenstance that she was able to carry a thing like this off. She is currently an executive in New York City, is the head of the Kelly Company, and president of the Standard Tungsten Corporation. This yeah. young lady. Besides being a representative? Besides being a representative. Now, number two, would you tell us who you really are and what you really do, please? My name is Pearl Milleran. I'm the wife of a commander in the United States Navy. Ah. <laughs> you see, she's wearing the commander's hat, can't you? Ah. <laughs> Beautiful. Number three, what is your real name and what do you do? I am Irene Kuo. I own and operate the Lychee Tree Restaurant here in New York City. Well, ladies, we thank you. And we tell you that there was one incorrect vote. So from Dristan, $250 and our sincere thanks. Also a package of the fine products. And the makers of Dristan, we certainly hope you enjoyed your visit. We thoroughly enjoyed meeting you. Goodbye and God bless you. Now let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is John Gould. My name is John Gould. My name is John Gould. And if you'll follow along with your copies, I'll read from mine, panel. I, John Gould, am editor of the Lisbon Falls Enterprise, the biggest little weekly in the state of Maine. I am also a columnist for one of the nation's most influential dailies. In addition, I am a registered Maine hunting and fishing guide. I have written eight books. My latest is called Monstrous Depravity and deals with the fate that good eating has suffered at the hands of the modern American housewife who no longer cooks a meal but merely thaws it out. <laughs> if the fine art of cookery is to survive, we men must step in and get back to basics like old-fashioned oatmeal. Boiled coffee, bean whole beans, pot hellion stew, and homemade bread. Signed, John Gould. Very well, panel. These three gentlemen all claim to be John Gould, author of a book entitled, interestingly enough, Monstrous Depravity. We'll start with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Thank you. Number two, what are yellow eyes? Beans. Oh. <laughs> Number three, what do they do in Presqu'Ile? I beg your pardon? What do they do in Presqu'Ile? What's their main industry in Presqu'Ile, Maine? I don't understand. It's Presqu'Ile. Oh, well, I always said Presqu'Ile. That's the French in me. <laughs> uh, well, all right, Presqu'Ile. <coughs> Potatoes and fishing. Uh, number one, um, uh, where does E.B. White live in Maine? I don't know. Number three, do you know? Never heard of him. E.B. White? No. Oh. <laughs> Number two, um, how long do you have to be an apprentice to be a fishing guide up in Maine? Freshwater fishing. There's no apprenticeship. Gene Rayburn. Number two, uh, <laughs> what is one of the most famous uh, rivers in America? Uh, a river that's still fairly clean uh, and unpolluted. It's in the, one of the New England states. The Allegash. Number three, uh, can you name one in Maine, in the state of Maine? Androscoggin. Uh, number one, uh, which is larger, an M quad or an N quad? An M quad. M, I like your enunciation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number two, uh, there's a very large newspaper, physically large newspaper in one of the New England states. Do you happen to know which one it is? I mean, when you open it up, your hands have to go out this far to, you know? No. Number one, do you know? Wall Street Journal. <laughs> Betty Furness. <laughs> well, Betty. Number one. Printed. Did you mean, is it printed there? Or maybe I should have asked you. Well, he hasn't any more time, oh, so we can't uh -oh. explain. We'll have to go along to Betty Furness. Betty? Number one, will you marry me? <laughs> 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 That's a 
the question. I love it. <laughs> Number one, for what is Ogunquit famous in the summer? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Playhouse or summer theater. What's the name of the big hotel in Ogunquit? Oh. Okay. Don't forget. forget. You still really <laughs> sore, aren't you, buddy? <laughs> Number two, how do you make boiled co coffee? Tom, <laughs> post it. You see, Betty, you don't know anything. I you women know how are to make certainly. I boiled coffee, and I'm from New England. That's a monstrous depravity. <laughs> I thought Grace Metallius wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> number, <laughs> number three. Number three, how come you don't know who E.B. White is? Come on, you're a newspaper man. I don't know who he is. Don't know who he is? No. Okay. Uh, number one, what happened to all that vinegar and honey that was so big up there in Maine a while back? Vermont. Vermont? Oh, sorry, Pat. <laughs> you don't know anything about it, do no, you? No, of course not. How long do you have to be an apprentice to become a fishing guide in Maine? You don't have to be. That's what number two says. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to confuse anybody. And that's all the time you had. You, you squandered your time this time, not asking us questions, but maybe you have got enough information and to mark your ballots. Try it. Mark them no at once. No change. No consultation. Vote, of course, for number one, number two, or number three. All voting completed. Tom, of course, as usual, we start with you. For whom did you vote? I voted for number one. I can't imagine a guy from Maine quoting another river instead of one from his own state when he's asked about a river in Maine. But I don't know. That was number two. And number three, they got to know who E.B. White is if he's a newspaper man, doesn't he? Doesn't he? Peggy. The river in Maine is the Allagash. But anyway, I voted for number two. Although he seems young to me, he knew about yellow-eyed beans. Yeah. And if you come from Maine, you ought to know about yellow-eyed beans. Yeah. Gee. Number one knows about him, too. <laughs> Number one, Peggy, also happened to know that an M quad is larger than an N quad. And that's why I voted for him. What is it? How do I know? <laughs> <laughs> Betty. Well, I voted for number one, whether he'll marry me or not. <laughs> and I think the reason that I voted for him is it takes one to know one, and I think that's the New Englander in that group. <laughs> Funniest splitting up here tonight, I tell you. It was uh, three for number one and one for number two again. And let's see, Eugene was the oddball in the first one, and Betty yep. in the second, and now it's Peggy. Let's see how this one comes out. As we learn now, which one of these gentlemen actually is the one who uh, wrote a rather pixie-named book called Monstrous Depravity. Will the real John Gould please stand up? What? 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 Oh, come on, get up. <laughs> Oh, my. Very good. Number one, what is your real name, sir, and what do you really do? <laughs> my, my name is James Blunt, and I'm a service representative for the health insurance plan of Greater New York. <laughs> <laughs> and number three, sir, what is your real name, and what do you do? My name is C.F. Mugridge, and I am mayor of the village of Asherokan in Long Island. You did the best tonight. You had three incorrect votes, and that times $250 is $750 from Tristan. <laughs> and, of course, a package of all the fine products from the makers of Tristan. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. I hope you enjoyed it. Good night, and God bless you. The United States Immigration Service would like to remind all aliens to report their addresses during this month of January. Very important. You should have filled out your card at your post office or your immigration office. And that's all the time we have. Good night, panel. Good thank night, you. Night, night, lovely night, evening. Night, and thank all of you, too. And, I, of course, I'll see you next week at the same time and tomorrow afternoon on the daytime show. In the meantime, speaking for Tristan, may I remind you once more to tell the truth. Good night. To tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. Tell the Truth has been brought to you tonight by Dristan Decongestant Tablets for relief of colds, misery, sinus congestion, Dristan. They help drain all eight sinus cavities. Dristan, 
Johnny Olson speaking. For to tell the truth, this program is pre-recorded. Jack Betty.